Hey there once again YouTube. How you guys doing today? Well, I just have just a few things to bring to you real quick for Yellowstone Super Volcano and Long Valley Super Volcano. By the way, today is, or right now, is 11.28 a.m. Pacific Time, June 15th, 2019. Today is my son Elijah's second birthday. So, happy birthday to my son Elijah. Hope he's going to have a good day today. We got some stuff planned for him. Starting out at Yellowstone, we see there was a very, very minor rapid fire swarm. I'm guessing probably just on the northern tip of Yellowstone Lake, but just slightly to the northeast, I believe in this location right here. Let's take a look at this real quick. Notice very minor, only a few quakes, but it was energetic and it is considered a rapid fire swarm because it occurred in rapid fire succession. That's why they're called that. So we're going to take a look at that real quick. And also let's go to the earthquake map, go down to California. Zoom all the way into Long Valley Caldera, which is a super volcano in Eastern California, down here. They're reporting about 23 earthquakes for the area, but there actually was a rapid fire swarm at Long Valley as well. And we're, we're going to take a look at that data in just a second. It occurred right down here near Mammoth Lakes. See, here's the rim of uh, the Long Valley Caldera. And zoom in. The resurgent dome is right up in this location, right up here. It occurred right on this intersection, right down here, just to the east of Mammoth Lakes. And, uh, you know, people live inside that super volcano. Yeah, I don't know. I would never live there. I'm sorry. But apparently some people do. But why don't we go take a look at some of the seismic data first for the Yellowstone earthquake swarm, which was very tiny. And they have not reported. Let's zoom to the U.S. so we can go up to Yellowstone. And as you can see, they're not reporting anything for Yellowstone right now. They probably will later on. What day is it today? Let's see. Is today Friday? Oh, today's Saturday. So usually they don't report much on weekends unless there's like a major magnitude 3 or magnitude 4. So probably on Monday they will report a few earthquakes from this earthquake swarm here. But starting out, I have data taken from borehole 208 YLA, YTP, borehole 944, and YLT. Now you may be asking yourself, Ben, how did you take data from borehole 208 if it's corrupted? Doesn't it look corrupted? Well, how did I take data from borehole 944 if it looks corrupted? Well, the connection to the servers that put them on, because is this thing on .org gets their web quarters from the University of Utah, directly from them, and it takes extra effort in the system to bring the data from the data center to their online web quarter server for the University of Utah. Sometimes glitches can occur there where it makes the data go out, but the data is still there. If you know how to download seismic data, so usually you won't come into that problem. Because when you download seismic data, you are literally only going through the data center itself. You're skipping a step. Pretty much like skipping the middleman, right? Sometimes using a middleman doesn't work out. But we see that the data is completely fine, and you'll see that in the seismic program swarm because we're going to use borehole 208. According to the PNS Wave Arrivals, Borehole 208 was the closest seismic station to this minor rapid fire swarm at Yellowstone today. And I'm only seeing a few quakes. I'm only seeing a few quakes, but YLA saw it second, YTP saw it third. Okay, so that means it probably occurred. Let me zoom in here. Let me zoom all the way in. Now, I don't know the exact location of this earthquake swarm, but I'm guessing, according to the PNS Wave Arrivals, I'm guessing in this location right here, on the northern tip of Yellowstone Lake, just to the northeast of Yellowstone Lake. So, let's go take a look at that in the Seismic Program Swarm, just real quick. Here we are in the Seismic Program Swarm, with the most recent data stream as of 11.30 a.m. Pacific Time, June 15, 2019. Happy birthday to my son Elijah, once again. Okay, so we see the earthquake swarm right here, and here's Borehole 208. You notice that the data is there, guys. Some of the most recent data is there. And that's where the earthquake swarm occurred. But if we go back here, notice borehole 208 where the earthquake swarm occurred right here. It looks like the data is corrupted, right? And you can see B208, EHC, PB, borehole 208, EHC, PB, June 15, 2019. So that does show the data is there. Don't let anyone tell you it's not because it's there. Trust me. Looking at this on the spectrogram, there has been, I have to admit, some very strange low frequency, I, I'm, I don't want to go on the limb and say tremor, because it is, these are indicative of surface waves, they almost look like love or Rayleigh waves, which are surface waves, so I am unsure what is causing this at all, 
but I just want to give you guys a heads up. There is some sort of low frequency activity, which borehole 208 and 944 and even borehole 950 up in Norris usually detects just a very, very slight low frequency vibration. Very, very small, very unnoticeable, but it's been a while since I've seen it this strong, so it is kind of intriguing as to what is occurring at borehole 208 or Yellowstone Lake. I don't know, but that's not what I want to focus on right now. Let's look at the earthquake swarm, shall we? The rapid fire swarm started at around, I'm going to say 1013 UTC, June 15, 2019. Going forward, going forward, you can see multiple events. Look at this right here. Look at this. It seems to build, right? Look at the spectrogram. Look at that. It almost looks like a shadowing effect. Isn't that weird? Just slowly builds. But that, the strength of that is very minuscule, though. But I hope they do report one of these earthquakes soon. Here is some of the earthquake swarm. Here's one of the earthquakes. I believe the largest was this one right here. I'm going to say probably a magnitude 1.8 to 2.0. So this one they definitely should report. So let's see. The swarm started again at about 1013 UTC and ended at about, let's see. I'm going to say it ended at about 1021 UTC. So what is that? What is that? Let's see. That's about, what, only eight minutes? So it lasted only eight minutes, but look at how many events there were. Just This is just preliminary. Nothing for sure, but there's about one, two, three, four, five, possibly six. Going forward. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, uh, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. Again, many, many are very, very small, but there are earthquakes nonetheless. I said 26, right? 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. So, so really no more than 32 earthquakes within this earthquake swarm within eight minutes, with about half of them probably being smaller than a than magnitude 0 0.5. So a lot of them, again, were very tiny, but the peak of the earthquake swarm, which is right here, Consisted of probably multiple magnitude 1.5s down to probably 1.3, possibly the largest right here being a magnitude 2.0 at the largest. So we'll see what they report it as on Monday, which I believe that is when they will report some of these, because a lot of these do have clear PNS wave arrivals, so they should be able to report them, I hope. Now, let's move on to the Long Valley earthquake swarm that occurred today as well. Here we are with station MCS in the NC network, no location code given, so it'd be dash dash, short period vertical EHZ in the seismic program swarm. We can see there has been an earthquake swarm. This right here I do not believe is part of an earthquake swarm. I believe this is surface activity in my opinion. It might not be, but in my opinion that definitely looks like sometimes surface activity. However, we see multiple earthquakes starting at about... I'm going to say 1253 UTC was when the swarm started, and you notice there are multiple events. They kind of look similar to the events at Yellowstone. But the Yellowstone earthquake swarm occurred around this time frame, around what, 10, what did I say, 1013 UTC? So that's around this time frame right up here. So very interesting how both Yellowstone and Long Valley saw a rapid fire earthquake swarm. And you could tell this earthquake swarm in the southern section of Long Valley Caldera, but in the center. It, it's weird, you know? I haven't seen a rapid fire swarm like this in a little while at Long Valley. It's very interesting. And yes, this can be considered a rapid fire swarm, especially as we get forward. Look at how many are occurring. Going forward, going forward, and then boom. Three. Three or four earthquakes within, let's see. Let's scoot this down a little bit. Three or four earthquakes. I'm probably going to say three. Occurred within about, let's see, 13, 30, 46, 13, 31. So within less than a minute, we have three pretty strong earthquakes. And notice the waveforms on this station are all screwed up because for some reason they do not allow the waveforms to go past 2,000 amplitude count. But when that happens, you can look at the duration to judge the magnitude. So that doesn't matter too, too much. Very interesting. I hope they fix station MCS soon and actually replace it with the new station because this I think it's an old old seismic station that they have there but we can see plain as day multiple earthquakes multiple multiple many many and of course a lot are pretty small yes but some aren't going forward I'm not seeing any low frequency tremor however there is something strange though 
before the earthquake swarm and actually during, actually pretty much constant, there's this strange, almost low frequency background activity. But looking at the spectra plot, I don't know. I don't know. It starts at about 4.4 hertz and ends at about 6 hertz. So I don't know if that can be really considered a low frequency background tremor. Could just be something from the seismic station. I don't know. But it's very interesting nonetheless. But again, Yellowstone saw a very minor rapid fire swarm today at Yellowstone Lake around 1013 UTC. And starting at around, I'm going to say, 1253 UTC on the same date, June 15, 2019, we saw a rapid fire swarm at Long Valley Super Volcano. So, isn't that interesting, guys? That's very intriguing. So, we'll, I'll continue to keep an eye on this. Don't you worry. Keep an eye out for additional blog posts on my website. Remember, I do have multiple blogs on my website. It's not just the Seismo blog, guys. If you go under the Seismic Events drop-down menu and look at some of the pages there, I do have additional blogs under the Seismic Events menu, under either by location or by event. Very interesting. So, again, we saw an earthquake swarm both at Long Valley and Yellowstone. Let's see if anything else has happened. So I've been recording. Not seeing too, too much. Not seeing too, too much, except there's an earthquake swarm still ongoing up here near the Purcell. Purcell. Purcell or Purcell. I don't know exactly how you say it. Up near the Purcell Mountains, we had a magnitude 4.5 at 7.1 kilometers in depth. Eventually, somewhere down the line, I am going to make a video about the ongoing earthquake swarm that started, I think it was last year. I think it was in early 2018 this earthquake swarm started, I believe, in a linear formation at the Purcell Mountains. It's not really a known volcanic area, but in my opinion, the Purcell Mountains look like an area of uplift, in my opinion. I mean, you can go up in Alaska on Google Earth and look at that yourself if you wish. Very, very intriguing, but I am going to try to do a video about that eventually. Zoom in California. Let's see, we had another, what is this? 3.2 at 11.4 kilometers in depth. A few people did feel it. Up near Petrolia, which does see some earthquakes sometimes. San Andreas down here, all the way down here in Los Angeles, did see a magnitude 3.0 at 5.1 kilometers in depth. So seismic activity isn't increasing like crazy, but it does seem something's going on. Something's going on, guys, especially those the magnitude 4.0 in Ohio not too long ago, even the 3.4 in Pennsylvania. I don't know, guys. We'll just have to keep a very close eye on it. Hope you guys have a great day. Happy birthday to my son Elijah again. It's his second birthday today. Hope you guys have a great day. God bless. See you later. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.